Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. This channel has mirror channels on BitChute, Brighteon, and Rumble. And on those channels, certain videos that used to be hosted here for about two years can only be found exclusively there. This is the medical playlist concerning certain things about the great shift the great change, the great paradigm movement that came about in the year 2020. The shift, the reset that has changed everything that we know about life. You can find that on Rim Rumble, BitChute, and Brighteon. You can find everything pertaining to this ministry in the drop-down menu below. If you just look below, you will see the name of the channel. And if you click either your computer or on your phone, there's there's a menu that will drop down everything. I always leave a blurb about each video. I leave links to the alternate channel so you can find it easily. I leave links back to the blog that is called the Master's Voice Prophecy Blog. This is where you can find all these messages in written form. All of these messages are not just coming down from the sky. They've been meticulously cataloged over a period of 10 years. Since 2012, when the Lord started giving me these messages, before that I ever knew that they would be written down formally, before I ever knew that they would become video just by reason of habit as a lawyer, cataloging everything, giving it a date and a time, and just marking it down in my journal. I kept the Lord's words because I believed that I was just stewarding them for my understanding until he spoke to me in 2019 and said to start the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. And so that is where you can find all the truths that the Lord Jesus Christ is bringing now for us in these times. Today, I have a very serious prophecy and I will be integrating it as time allows. I pray that this video will be succinct as time allows with several other things. This is a heavy prophecy, and this is a very firm word from the Lord. So not that any of the other prophecies are not firm, but if you've been here for a long time, you will notice that I bring out certain themes. And one of those themes is to caution Christians. If you are a Christian and you are not aware of the time that you are living in, we are living in the final time that will come upon the face of this earth. I'm not just making this estimation because I think it sounds like a very interesting and woo-woo thing to say. I'm saying it because it is true. We are in the time where God is now going to be winding down everything that deals with mankind. The supremacy of mankind is going to come to an end. The rise of things that are not man are going to come to the forefront. And the end of it is that we are going to find our way of life, the things that we are used to, the things that have always informed even our basic identity. What does it mean to be a human? Forget about what does it mean to be a Christian for a moment, because every Christian is still a human being. We are going to come to the place in time, space, and history where the fundamental identity of who has always held dominion on this planet, on this earth, us human beings, it is going to be questioned, it is going to be attacked, it is going to be evilly changed and meticulously pulled apart until there are just a few threads flowing in the wind still holding true to what God said, man is made of the earth, having a soul and a spirit that was breathed into him by God. All of that is going to change. The things that you see happening at the edges and the fringes, all this, um, all this rise of interest with money that is not money anymore, all this rise in interest with how far can we push medical science under the guise of let's make it more convenient, let's make it more helpful, we're doing this for you, we're trying to break the frontiers of science, we want to heal you, we want to take away human frailty, we want to take away human weakness, we want to take away human aging, why should you die, oh man? These are God's words, but the devil is now taking those words and repackaging it into a fake form of eternal life. All these things are going to come to the fore, and what you're going to find is that the reign of man, God's intention that we should have dominion here on earth and rule, is going to come to an end, and a new kingdom is going to rise. If you do not know that we are in the time where that transition is happening, and because it's being powered in part by man, some of it is being powered by the devil himself, Satan himself, but some of it 
A lot of it in front of our eyes are being executed by human beings. And so the transition is not that smooth. The transition is at a point where, I will just say this, it's at a point where people really believe if they get together and protest and say a lot on the internet and like, we are the people are woke, we see what they're doing. Sometimes the Lord just says to me that people don't understand just how wicked the devil is. People really underestimate how wicked this creature is. And there are those who even now, as they hear the sign of my voice, will say, you see, that's why I don't like this channel. She glorifies Satan. The things that the devil will do, God has shown to me. And the things that the devil will do will happen because Revelation 13 and Daniel 7 are two books that make it very clear that just as man has had his time, Satan likewise will have his time. And when man was having his time, nobody was stopping him. He was cutting down all the forests and he was building all the skyscrapers and he was dragging the sea and catching all the shrimp in there, forgetting that it's going to alter the ecosystem of the sea and everything like that. When man was having his moment, his day of glory, his zenith, his rise, it was happening and nobody was stopping him. So understand that when scripture says that the beast will trample, it doesn't say that the beast might trample, but then when people galvanize themselves in West Africa and they galvanize themselves in East Africa and they get together really well, you know, in, in the corners of Europe, and then they just push back in North America, then what's going to happen is the beast system is going to say, oh me, oh my, we didn't count on protests. I've spoken on this channel that we are dealing with people who are going to release diseases so deadly that the Lord says that they have not been seen, understood, thought about, or studied in the last hundred years. That's four generations of doctors who have been born, gone to school, gotten old. Some of them have now passed away, and none of those doctors will see what the people that I'm speaking about are going to release on the earth. A lot of people don't understand that many things that are in the book of Revelation, it is not because God is doing it. Prophecy can be the Lord speaking and saying, I will. And whenever he's going to do something, God will usually say, I will cause this and I will cause your leg to rot and I will cause the beasts of the sea to go away and things like that. And then there's prophecy that is simply revelatory. The eye of the Lord has seen what will be because he knows all things and he has spoken it and has been captured in the book. So when the Lord is talking about, for instance, the pale horse riding in the book of Revelation chapter six, I think it's six and eight. It says that, you know, behold, I saw a pale horse and on it was death and hell followed with him. And they were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill with pestilence. Pestilence is one of the things that they will kill with. So we're all thinking, okay, the end times is going to have pestilence. The end times is going to have horrible diseases. But what God is doing by opening up the scripture through now prophecy is showing celestial, tell them that the pestilence written in Revelation 6 and 8 is caused right there on the earth. I've brought many prophecies where the Lord causes said that the release of these diseases is what he calls man's inhumanity to man. I have spoken that the Lord says that here in the United States, there are diseases in underground places that when they are working on it, he calls it weaponization. He says that they work on these diseases, which are already some of them naturally deadly, but then they hybridize it with other things. And he calls that weaponizing it to make it 10 hundred or hundred million times more deadly. He says that some of the things that have been worked on here in America are so deadly that they have killed the scientists who worked on them. And in other cases, he said that when it was worked on successfully, the people who commissioned the weaponization of the viruses killed the scientists who were working on it because they do not want any loose ends talking. So the stuff I'm speaking here is not conspiracy theory and it's definitely not from the news. I do not watch the news and then bring news headline to an eager subscriber base. I see myself as one that God has sent. I see myself as the one who is acting as a bridge to say, I have seen these things and here I come to tell you what the Lord is saying because he is heading in a certain direction and he bathes all who will live, all who love life, to repent of their sins, to come back to the cross, to begin to realize how valuable it is to have a rock ironclad relationship with a living God 
and follow him wherever he is headed through what is coming. Today's prophecy is speaking about death. There is nothing that I can do about that. There are about seven prophecies on the master's voice that are exclusively about the, te- the type of death that is coming to the earth. I have made about three of them. One of them is called Desolations Are Determined Part 1, and I will simply go back over a little bit of that as time allows. But for now, today's prophecy is looking at men of righteousness and a particular aspect of death that God says cannot be changed by anyone. The title of this word is this. It is based on Ezekiel chapter 14, and it is called Noah Shall Not Save His Children. And I received this word on February 19, 2023. So, The banner scripture is this, for thus says the Lord God, how much more it shall be when I send my four severe judgments on Jerusalem, the sword and famine and wild beasts and pestilence to cut off man and beast from it. Yet behold, there shall be left in it a remnant who will be brought out, both sons and daughters. Surely they will come out to you and you will see their ways and their doings. Then you will be comforted concerning the disaster that I have brought upon Jerusalem, all that I have brought upon it. And they will comfort you when you see their ways and their doings, and you will know that I have done nothing without cause, that I have done in it, says the Lord God. Ezekiel 14, verses 21 to 23, and I will go deeper into the scripture towards the bottom of it. But in short, today's message is brief and it is difficult and it is pointing directly to what I have always said on this blog. Heaviness of a heart is part of the end times. You cannot be a Christian and say that you are studying to get the whole counsel of God and then you think that all that is left for us who are in this world watching companies being given the right to invent robot dogs that they are telling us, oh no, these are going to be the helpful dogs that will help the cops. People, please understand that stuff that Boston Dynamics are working on, that stuff are the cops. They already premiered one in the Bronx last year. They did it to see how people will respond. They did not send the dog out with officers. They simply primed the dog with its cameras and they had it roaming around a controlled space. And they do this, this is called beta testing. They do this to watch how people will respond to the world that will soon be our reality one day. A world in which they will not need the beat cop. Why? Because these dogs are going to be out there with mounted cameras on their head. And if you think these dogs are only surveillance dogs. No, they will also carry mounted weaponry and will have the power through artificial intelligence to make independent decisions in the course of chasing a suspect, apprehending a suspect. This suspect, we have scanned him through the cameras as we're going and we can already see he has 16 priors. He is not a useful member of society and they will put that person down, no pun intended, like a dog. This is the future that is coming. AI will make the decisions. AI will decide who gets to live and who does not get to live. God is trying to warn us that the future will be heavy. So we cannot be disingenuous and think that it's going to be a kumbaya ending. I'm I'm speaking these things because God wants us to be sober-minded people. I'm not speaking these things to take away the joy of families, the joy of people, but God knows that the church is extremely flighty. God knows that the church is foundationally sitting upon a very rocky structure, and that structure is soon we fly, and oh no, we're at this point of the timeline, and 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 the tribulation has started. You can walk walk into Walmart, you can walk into Starbucks, and you can get a coffee, and then you think you're in the tribulation only. The foolishness will only be rooted in this place because other people are not laboring under these types of delusions, that you're free to walk around, that you're free to do as you please, that you're free to actually say anything about the president that you want, and then you imagine that tribulation has started. You're free to go. You're free to come. Nobody's nobody's grabbing you and throwing you on the ground like I have described in these prophecies, that in the, in the future, they will be grabbing people for no reason and putting them to death on a whim. But then people in America believe 
that tribulation has started and we're already halfway through and then soon we're going somewhere. And these are the things that God wants to disabuse us of because soft doctrine, erroneous doctrine, it eats away at the foundation of truth like candy eats away at children's teeth. And we are not children. The time of our youth, with the exception of the actual youths who come here, is far spent. But we are tilted in our theology. We are tilted in our understanding. Some of us know too much and there's no room in the cup for even three more drops that could save you and those children at home. You know everything. You know everything. The Spirit of the Lord cannot speak to you. And you do not know the danger that is actually sitting at the door with a God saying, This message is primarily for people who truly love God. Even to you, the Lord has sent me to bring this message that the sword will come to some of your doors. You were listening to this very long scripture that I was reading. This video is not going as planned, and that is just the Lord's own doing, having incorporated a ton of beast stuff that I wasn't even going to talk about, but he knows why he brought it out. We must be sober-minded people. Time is spent The hour is far spent to labor. I hear the phrase that is coming in my heart. They are laboring in delusion. Do you know how difficult and how dangerous it is to labor in delusion? Do you know how difficult and dangerous it is to think that it is two minutes to midnight and it's just 3.30? The sun is bright in the sky, but you can't discern it. You look and you say, no, that's the moon. The hour is soon come for our deliverance. And there isn't even anything surrounding you that you can see with the eye that you need deliverance from. This message is primarily to the righteous, where God is saying that there will be a remnant in the land after some very harsh things that he is going to do. And he says, you will see your sons and daughters coming out to you. You will see their ways and their doings. That means that he is speaking to a section of people who after the harsh things has done, what are the harsh things? The sword. War is coming to America. It is already in the live prophecy prayer call. The Lord says a minimum of a brutal and savage, brutal and savage civil war in this country where blood will run and the people outside the nations will be looking and thinking, what madness, what heat of fever has fallen upon America. I speak to people with my whole heart on this channel and they think that I'm bringing forth what I think and my bad dreams that I had after eating pizza. And yet as far back as 2015, the Lord was telling me they will flee to the four corners of the earth. In some places they will be received with love. In other places they will be received with mockery. Their passports will be ruined. That is American passports will be stamped rejected. I saw the customs official laughing. He was laughing and he was saying, oh, the great America, what are you doing here? He stamped no entry and they had to get back on the plane and go back to wherever the the port of call, the medium port of call that they were traveling through, or maybe they were traveling somewhere else and that country, they only wanted to transit and they were blocked. People in this country were being treated as less than dirt. Let the arrow of the Lord go where it will. If I have to make this video again, the one that focuses on the prophecy, I will make it. To be laboring under a delusion and think that you are at Maranatha hour and the Lord is saying, I am getting ready and soon I'm going to say, ready, get set. So people think they are in the race. They think, oh, we're running. Look at the signs around us. And the Lord is saying, oh no, I haven't yet actually ask the fat lady. She, she's not even warming up yet. She's still in the back putting on her face powder. It is dangerous to be deceived. And there are righteous people that God is saying, your sons and your daughters will make it. They will come out of this. They will come out of the sword, out of the war that is coming, not only to America, nations of the world. I'm here to tell you that war is coming to the whole world. On a prayer call that I was having last year, which is recorded and has been made available for you, it is not my responsibility to listen to these things for you. It is my responsibility to hear the Lord and then to bring these messages to you as a trumpet that does not sound out conjecture, news stories, hyperbole, and lies. If you've noticed, I take great care not to say, hi, you guys, I've just come with another prophecy because the things that I'm talking about are so heavy that if I come and I mishandle them, they will actually tear the chambers of your heart. They will tear your heart. I am as calm and as measured as I can be, and people are still not able to bear what I'm saying. 
There is war coming to all the nations. I saw war breaking out like a rash. And the Lord said that this earth is going to be hit with mass migration. I've already talked of the genealogy migration where you will feel the pull to go back. There's another type of migration coming, a mass exit out of the United States led by the Africans and the Europeans. The Africans are going to flee this country as if they have been lit on fire. I saw you at the airports in 2015 and hear what God was saying. If you are African of or, or of any other descent, and you are here and you have given birth to children and you have not procured for your children a secondary citizenship. When you get to the borders and the dragnet of America, America is going to lock again tighter than 2020. 2020 was just a dry run. 2020 was like, let's see how long we can shut the world down for. Let's see how long we can get a unison of all airports closed and everything shut down. Basically 2020 was their first bold attempt to say, let's see if we can get these people to actually go in the house and sit there because we say so. And we threaten threats and we put the cops on the street all over Brooklyn. And they're asking you when you're trying to go and do your laundry, ma'am, where are you going? And I have to say, laundry officer. 2020 was just a dry run that I saw all the way in 2015. And I warned certain people, they watched this channel and they know that I warned them and nobody took it seriously. Nobody except one aunt. And then it happened. In 2015, I saw African people rolling on the floor with top drama and the reason why something had happened here in America. And it was probably the second 9-11 event that the Lord says it's going to happen. Something had happened here in America so grave that the nation locked and the only people who were allowed to leave were foreigners. Foreigners could not be kept in America. A foreigner is, a foreigner does. A foreigner can pick up his or her passport and say that I'm Scandinavian and you can't hold me. All their governments will airlift them home. They have every right to leave. But I saw that foreigners who had naturalized and forgotten their roots, in other words, did not have any kind of paperwork to prove that they were something before they became an eagle. They could not leave. I saw that Africans who had come and always maintained their original citizenship but had given birth to eagle children could not get those children out. At the airport, there were soldiers. There were soldiers at the border, but God was showing me mostly concentrated at the airport. Why? Because the airport is the fastest way to get away from a nation that has become a boiling pot, a cauldron. The soldier said that you cannot, you new American citizens are not allowed to leave this country. And I saw Africans pulling their clothing, doing the most, weeping, because who are the American citizens the soldier was saying cannot leave? A 17 year old, a 14-year-old and a six-year-old. Who are you going to leave the citizens with? They can't live in a house together. They don't know how to do anything without their parents. Parents were forced to stay here because there was no exit out. Sword is coming to the nations. The Lord said mass migrations. He said that countries are going to be overwhelmed with a brand new refugee movement. War is going to fulfill exactly like Revelation 6, and it will be a global problem. People hear and they're like, oh, you know, war, war is not a joke. War is not a joke. A story that a young man told me has been hammering on my heart for some days, and I will share it since I've ended up in totally different territory from where the prophecy was headed. In the prayer call, the Lord said that all the nations will see either war skirmishes or the effect of war. This is a direct war, like America fighting herself for three years. And he said it can go longer if people do not repent properly and cry out for mercy. That war will happen, but God said it could go much longer if the repentance is not done. That's one type of war, civil war. And then there's the cross-border war, ethnicity. The Bible says nation against nation, but then it says kingdom against kingdom. Why would it repeat itself? Because in the Bible, when they say nation, they're actually talking about people. You're going to see something like what happened in Rwanda before. Hutu, Tutsi, two ethnicities within one border, suddenly inflamed by the madness of the devil and of the time, rising up to hack and cut one another once more. 
internal wars, and then there's kingdom versus kingdom. Now that's two separate countries. Russia and China saying, America, the season has come upon our heart. The eagle will fly no longer in the skies. Countries just breaking out into war. And God said that there will be some countries, they will not have war. What they will have is suddenly people flooding in from the east and people flooding out in from the west where there are wars on both sides, flooding into the safe and the neutral zone. This will be everywhere. Russia is going to march all across Europe in the end times. France, I saw you. You were a Russian territory. German, no difference. God says for your hedonistic lifestyle and the fact that you think that he is a mythological fantasy, that your unbalanced ancestors who spread the gospel, Martin Luther and all the people across Europe and Great Britain and all the other centers of learning where God was studied, God was venerated, even if there were abuses because of the egregious sins of the Catholics, God was in Europe. The fire burned out a long time ago, and now the only fires are broiling expensive sirloin steaks. God said that Russia will tame you. Russia will bleed down from the north across those territories. All the people who used to be part of the Soviet Union are going right back into Russia in the last days. In fact, in one of the prophecies, God said, and I repeat it, he said that actually Vladimir Putin in his heart only talks about joining NATO as a courtesy. God said the fact that Russia has been systematically excluded so often from things doesn't bother Putin. He says there's nothing that NATO talks about that Vladimir Putin does not know because there are a ton of pro-Russian states that are members of NATO. And the first one that he mentioned is Turkey and said that President Erdogan is a friend of Mr. Putin. I've never been to either of those countries. So it's either I'm speaking from news that's not yet on the TV or it's coming from the mouth of the father. One war that is going to come and Damascus shall be destroyed from being a city. What has happened in that place in Syria that America has done is not the final. America and Syria are going to have another war and this place is going to shell those people into dust and rubble. Because I saw the Syrian president loudly barking remonstration against America. This is yet to come. I've spoken it already that God says in the future, nations will let fly from the heart against this nation. They will say everything that is in their hearts to say. Volatile words, smoking words. Iran is another one. America and Iran will have a skirmish. The Lord did not show me a, an all out war. I saw that it was just like, um, cockfighting, you know, those roosters that are just tortured and they brought up with so much trauma that if you touch them, they're ready to scratch and leap. I saw it represented as two bantam cocks fighting, leaping, scratching. And you know what? The chicken or the rooster that represents Iran struck America and drew blood. American soldiers will lose their life in some kind of conflict that is coming with Iran. And the Lord says that it is because Iran is tired of the sanctions, is tired of the way that America has held it under its boot with propaganda and sanctions and everything else, which unfortunately geopolitically I may not have in depth. I'm not going to speak to that. All I know is that I saw that the world was watching. It was a war of words. And then it just blah, 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 into something really quick, something, I don't know exactly what, but at the end, Iran drew blood. And when Iran drew blood from the United States, there were many countries smiling. There were many countries. Definitely Vladimir Putin was one of the first presidents to call the Ayatollah, I think his title is, and congratulate Iran on standing up to America. All these things the Lord has said. I have been sitting here for a very long time and I've never brought anything that God has not shown me. I've never said, oh, why, why don't I just go and say this because I need something to say. I'm not here to take part in the fascinations that America wants to talk about. Politics, 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 politics all the time. Until they shoot the speaker, like God said. Until she's taken out like a candle wick going out. God is going to touch the big names in this country. The Lord says, America, you will fulfill the same punishment of Israel 
where it's saying captive, sit down on the ground and loose the bonds from around your neck. Captive daughter, sit down on the ground and loose the rope that has been put around your neck. When the high-flying funerals are taking place, the Lord said this country will grow quieter and quieter. That means that finally, at least from my perspective, people will have less to say. There will finally be less air on the airwaves because people will be taken aback and they will not quite know what is going on. Why are the stars dying and why are the CEOs dying and why are the rich people dying and why is, why, why is my next door neighbor dying? What's with all the dying? There is a sickle that is going to be put in the earth. This sword. And behold, I saw a red horse. And power was given to him to take peace from the earth. What does it say next? That men might kill one another. Two neighbors always arguing over a parking space. Until one day the argument turns bloody. The Lord said, men killing their wives. And when the cops come and say, why did you butcher her like this? He said, because she burned dinner. But I tell you what, she won't burn it anymore. These are the words that I'm hearing. I'm not here to talk about Shiba coin and dates for the rapture that keep getting pushed out. And then the uploader deletes the video. Famine, wild beasts, and pestilence. God says that he's going to use this in the earth, and he will cut off both man and beasts in these ways that I'm speaking of. But he says there will be a remnant left. And the thing about this prophecy is he said that the remnant will see both son and daughter come out of these calamities. The remnant will see both son and daughter come out of these storms. And he said that their hearts will be comforted when they see that they have that their children have survived and they can still see their children's ways and doings. That means you can actually see your children, your children still alive and moving about. And he says in this prophecy, when you who will get to see your family members all survive these calamities, he said, you will know that nothing I did was without cause. And so the Lord is one of those people, unfortunately, who constantly has to justify himself to human beings. I've said it before that you never see a dog questioning God. You will never see a flower saying, well, you didn't make me a flower. I'm going to be a bee. I'm changing my de gender and I'm just going to buzz my way into the hive. And I don't want to be a lily. I don't want to be a rose anymore. It is to mankind. Tragically, God's highest pinnacle creation and what he loves most here on the earth, it is to us that will always push and shove and challenge. And what's this in the Bible? I have a problem with it. I just think that it was just wrong that he did that. And I'm just trying to see the compassion and the love of God in this. Here is a thought. Simmer down. You are but a blip in time in God's eyes. If you have not studied to show yourself approved, humble yourself and ask the Lord and he will give you answers from his word. But when you exalt yourself and think that there is anything in you, a speck of carbon, walking across this planet that can drop dead from heat stroke if it gets too hot, if you think that you are in a position to question this one who is outside of eternity, then this book will always be closed to you and you'll be 60, 70, and 80 years old without understanding still, getting ready to stand in front of him at the end of your life and all you will have covering you like filthy rags or your doubts when you could be wearing the white robe that is called, yes, Lord, I believe, for that is righteousness. That is the only righteousness that saves. And Abraham believed God, and it was appointed and accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham did not say to God, well, that doesn't make sense because I'm a lot older now and my wife is way past menopause. And in fact, you know, we're out here in a foreign country and how will we raise this boy? Abraham said, yes. Like Mary, he had the same answer. Be it unto your manservant that even at 75, you're giving me the promise of legacy. A tribe, as many as the sand upon the seashore, out of me, an old man. Yes, I believe. I accept. That is righteousness. And yet people pride themselves on how they doubt God.
I look at some of you and I even question if you know how precious, not even the gate, the dust that is outside heaven. If heaven has little bits of gold dust that finally turn into the streets of gold, if you know how precious it is to be accepted to even put your two big toes on that dust, if you have not grasped it, then of course you will look at the only entry point, this book, the only key that can get you there and say, well, I don't know, certain things just don't line up. There are only two lines, the line into the pits of hell, the lake of fire, and the line where we might get to say, please pass me more of the salt at the wedding supper. Make sure that when things are lining up, you are thinking of eternity far beyond and what line you will be on. Have all the doubts, have all the questions, push back against God, curse his word. The channel cruisers who come here, I, I, what's she talking about? She using scripture? Beware, false prophecies everywhere. Lazy, cannot do the work. Too many videos for you to actually go through the videos and learn something. And so you just want to spit in the water, except that God has put protective brass over this well. Yes, the lid over this well is very heavy. And just like Jacob did for Rachel, only the Holy Spirit will roll this brass lid away for the humblest people who come here to drink and I love God for doing it like that. This, chumble, this channel will stumble the proud. You will walk right past the place where God is warning you that on your knees is where he may protect you. May. Life will be lost, people. I have never made those prophecies because those prophecies are so heavy. They made me weep. One of the dreams that I was planning to share in this video I woke up crying in bed, crying in my sleep, because I dreamt that there was a great gathering across the whole earth. It just looked like an outdoor picnic, just people across the whole earth standing outside in the outdoors and lights, lights, lights rising to the sky, beautiful lights, exactly like the Chinese lanterns. You know how you just have these dreams and you just find yourself in the dream and at first you don't know what's going on. But as I was watching the lights rise, some Some of those lights were saying goodbye to me. They weren't speaking. I could hear them telling me goodbye in the heart. And I knew it was my loved ones. Life will be lost. Be careful with the talking people. If God has not given you a rock solid promise that at the end of it all, there you will stand unharmed in one piece. I will go straight to the vision that I saw in this prophecy. I saw two families standing before the throne of God, both families righteous, because that is basically the crux of this prophecy. Both righteous families. One was a family of five, the other a family of four. In the family of five, all members of the family were in color, male and female. And on top of that, they had this kind of great sparkle across them. I can only call it glistening. It looked like one of these filters on, on one of the many apps that the children use where you, you sparkle all in front. They were not wearing white robes or anything like that. God just showed me ordinary people in ordinary clothes with sparkling all over them. And they were smiling towards the Lord. And I only saw his throne from the back. So only the, the throne and, and not seeing who's sitting in the throne but the people in front, as if I was standing behind the throne watching. And the other family, four, three, were blanked out in shadow. They were gray silhouettes with a white line around them. So you cannot tell if it was a male or a female, just a human shape, all grayish black, and then rimmed with white. There was only one person standing in color. Both families righteous, both family had made it. Through the end times, the only difference is that one family made it intact. All of them lived. The other family, all were lost except one. Both acceptable to God. Both made it to heaven. The difference is that one family came with nobody lost and the other family came. Only one person lived. His relatives fell into the ones that form what we call the dead in Christ. 
For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will no, by no means precede, that means go ahead of or go in front of, those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now you understand why I'm always speaking on this channel of coming out of the deception of thinking that you know end times headlines and you know end times timelines so well that you don't understand that there is going to be a great reaping and a great harvesting of this earth before any of us hear any archangel shout anything. Now you understand what Apostle Paul meant when he said, then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Why would the apostle say, alive and remain? It is simple. By the time Jesus gets here, not everybody is going to be alive or remaining. When you hear the word remain, it means that some of its number have been taken away, except that it's not going to be taken away in the way people assume, because if it was, then he would not say alive. He means that that number has been taken away by sleep. The number has been taken away by the plagues that will take many of the righteous home. Many of the righteous were taken away by what happened in 2020. They didn't have to go and take juice in their arms. They were still taken away. They went. This pain that I'm talking about is already active in the earth. Families have already felt it. Some families have two silhouettes already. Some families have only one. Some families have lost everybody. There are no silhouettes. They will all meet the Lord. None of them are in color. They will all meet the Lord in silhouettes with the white rim to show acceptable. He was just showing a simple picture. So please don't run off into your little Facebook groups to start more of your lies. These are serious things. The, the church is going to come through threshing. God has already said, America, that when you change governments, and Mr. Change is coming, comes back. The man who ran on the platform of change, he ran on change, but he never told anybody what exactly that change was going to be. The Lord says when that man comes back, he's coming back into absolute dictatorship, absolute rule. And if that offends against you, but we have the constitution mind, the constitution is going to be torn to pieces, courtesy of Mrs. Kamala Harris. She will shred it, as I said, in one vision. She will scribble new laws, decrees, and rules on top of it, as I said in another dream. She will trample upon it with her feet, and she will scrub it out with a pen so hard that I saw that the Constitution had huge gaping holes. All the lawmakers were standing there when she was scrubbing and scratching at it until the document was torn. I saw them, gray-haired men who have been career people serving on the Hill, they were dying inside watching the decrees. Executive order is coming to the United States. The end of this nation is a nation of executive orders. You do it or you die. Now you understand why Jesus was talking about woe if you have small children. Woe when you hear this and that. Run away to the hills. He wasn't leaving these instructions for the fictional group of people called the left behind. See people asking me, do you think we should store food? What do you think? What would Noah do? Is my question to you. What would Noah do? For the title of this prophecy is Noah shall not save his children. Who was Noah? Noah was a preacher of righteousness, an extremely righteous man, a man so righteous in fact that when God deleted the entire search history of the universe, Noah was the only URL he saved alive. Noah and seven with him. But God says that the stress that is coming upon the earth will take away the children of the righteous and even the righteous parents will not be able to protect their own children. Your righteousness will not be able to cover that small child. Unfortunately, the fever will take him away because the Lord says in the prophecy that is called settle the accounts of men. The Lord says that what is coming ahead is so hard, small children cannot bear 
the changes in the weather that are coming, scorching heat, freezing cold. We will not be in our homes comfortably watching me as we are now. He says that small children will be taken away by the harshness of the conditions. Sometimes older people too. Sometimes people with compromised health. In one prophecy, the Lord put the word in my mouth and I spoke and he said, you will battle with the disease and lose. This does not mean that I don't love you. Has any pastor prepared your mind for the fact that sometimes the, pa the cancer doesn't go? That sometimes the cancer wins? That sometimes your graduation is not through Maranatha, but it is through disease? And that the Lord still loves you? The Lord said that death is only asleep. When I reach those prophecies, I will read everything. He said, you do not understand me. To me, death is just a sleep. Noah saved his family, but the Lord says that the tests coming across the earth is that every man's righteousness will cloak him. Righteousness will not be able to extend to cover your trans children that you've been making excuses of for all your life. I, I still love him. I need to accept him. You can accept him and you can be saved. But when he goes into the second line that I was speaking about where the doubters and those who are proud against the word of the Lord because they think that they are fit human mortals to judge God's word, imagine. Not even the prophecy. I'm speaking of the, the written word. They've no respect for it. You can accept and receive who you want to. But then when the Lord puts them in the second line, don't complain. Righteousness will not save all children. And that is the Lord's prerogative. I've written out this prophecy. Everything is clear. I covered what I believe the Holy Spirit wanted me to bring out. So until I see you again, this is Celestial with the Master's Voice. God bless you. Please make sure that you click the link and go back to the blog and read this particular word. It's very important. Until I see you again.